My partner, John Coleman, and I get to speak with Michelle Fabregar, our love and relationship coach, once again. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Hey, Michelle. Good to see you. Um, you know, everybody wants a happier life. And in the past, you and I and Art have talked about um, many, many subjects that really touch on, on, you know, getting, being happier with your life. But one of the things that uh, I recall is our personal narratives, how we really can control uh, our story, as it were. Mm. Uh, and and I wondered, what have you got for us about the narrative that, you know, controlling our narratives so that we can have a happier life? Yeah, yeah. I mean, many of us probably heard that, you know, happiness is an inside job, right? So, yeah. so much of how we feel about our lives and ourselves and frankly, the world at large is what we are thinking. And so, you know, I have some kind of questions that will invite introspection, I hope. Do you have a story about who you are and what's acceptable or available to you in your life, right? right? right. Or what about for a partner, if you have one or about someone you wanna date? Do you have some view of how this person has to be? Um, you know, um, what are their options and choices? You know, are your own thoughts encouraging to you? Or are they holding you back? So, you know, part of my work with clients is just regularly helping them to listen. So I listen to what they're sharing with me and together we listen, notice their thoughts. So, um, and then they get to decide, we all get to decide, right? Is this true? And does this thought help me or is it stale and from long ago and does not serve me anymore? So we get to decide, is there a better thought that we want to install in there <laughs> and, yeah. and work with that, right? Because we really, we get to, this is like, you know, maybe it's like a garden and can we pluck the weeds out? I know I've used some of these analogies before, but Take the, like, for instance, you know, I'm too old for sex, going back to school, learning a new language, right? Or I'm not the kind of person who uh, relationships never work out for me, or, you know, I'm not attractive, or, you know, people always leave me, or, you know, it's not safe to trust others, right? We have these different thoughts that kind of swim around in there, and sometimes we don't really pay attention to them, but if we do, um, it's key because frankly, part of us is listening to them. If we're not consciously listening to them, some part of us is, and I believe that limits our choices. Sure, sure. I, I, you bring up an excellent point and that is, of course, so we have these narratives. We've talked about this before. We have these narratives that we create and oftentimes we're unaware of them. You, you really right. have to figure out what am I, where is this coming from? What am I really thinking about? myself and what I'm doing and my relationships and what I really want and how I'm acting. And then, as you point out, then you can act to change them. Mm. Right, right. Or question them at least, like, wait a second, so who, sends a, who thinks I'm too old to do this or something, or my partner yeah. shouldn't want to do that. It's like, you know, because some of these things, you know, we get them from when we're kids. Some of these things, you know, from when we're little and it's like, you know, back then they maybe did make sense about how we're trying to orient in the world and how to keep ourselves safe, um, you know, not take too many big risks or something like that. But some of these don't really, you know, we get them from our culture, we get them from the media, the news, you know, and, and they guide us and they limit us, right? Because, you know, we think we have these guardrails that we have to, you know, stay in this groove. But um, if we want to live a more fulfilled and, you know, fully expressed and satisfied life, we really need to question everything. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of simplistic, but um, yeah. Am I correct, Michelle, in, um, in, in thinking about these narratives? Uh, you, you mentioned guardrails. Am I correct in thinking that we can make these narratives uh, constrictive if we want to, if we think that's going to make us happier? I, I'm thinking, let me take an extreme example. I'm I'm not a lawbreaker. I always stop at a red light, you know, or I always I always mm. follow the laws to the T. And and that's a narrative you're telling yourself who you are, 
Right. Um, and it is constrictive in a sense, but it's a good thing. Is, yes. is, is that okay? Yes. I, I mean, I love what you're saying here. It's a, a little different thought. The idea I'm having is like alignment. Am I aligned with my conscience, uh, with my morality, with my beliefs? And, and that is a great, you know, you know, thing to notice, like part of our identity. Like yeah. I'm not someone who's going to, you know, uh, break up with someone without even telling them and ignore, you know, go to somebody, right. We've talked about different things like that, but you know, so that's, I, I love that too, because that's also part of our narrative. And some of these narratives are helpful to us and they serve us, but some of them, you know, I shouldn't be wanting to, you know, keep this example, you know, you're in a long-term mar marriage or whatever. I shouldn't want to date other people. It's like, well, says who? Is that a possibility for you? Is that something that intrigues you? Is it, you know, like I'm not saying go run and do it. Obviously some communication needs to happen, but to kind of honor what is coming up for us and to let ourselves have these possibilities. Sometimes it's just about that freedom to imagine. Yes. And that yeah. can lead to some other shift like, oh, well, actually I want to be having, you know, more connection with my partner. Oh, well that changes something, you know? So we need to be open to what comes up. And we also need to not limit ourselves by it. So it's kind of a double edge. <laughs> Excellent point. Yeah. So yeah, don't believe everything you think. <laughs> <laughs> great advice. I'm going to write that one down. That's great. Don't believe everything you think. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.